Throughout the social media landscape, you know, YouTubers and things, when they start talking about investment, passive income, investment strategies and things like that, one thing that they don't talk about is the hardships. I mean, everybody looks like everything that they did, everything that they touched turned to gold. Hell, we might be on this channel sometimes uh, at fault for doing that. But in truth, you know, going through the journey is ups and downs. There's down, a few downs. It ain't everything goes up. I, I wish it was, but that's not the truth. Um, I was just reading an article by Charlie Munger, and he said his number one tip with dealing with hardships is cry, but don't quit. And usually the people that's successful, that's what they had. They had hardships, but they didn't quit. They complained about it, but they didn't quit. And, and I think the differentiating factor between the successful and non-successful is people that that's not successful today that try to be successful but they cry and then they live in that mode of being crybabies they live in the mode of whoa it's me they live in the the thing of oh i already tried something it didn't work so i should just not try again so i don't want to be heartbroken the truth of it is is cry but don't quit but alex i'm gonna let you speak about it then i'm just gonna talk about uh one of the hundred hardships I had during this journey. So let people know that they're not alone. And it's uh it's a it's a team, it's a team of people that's out there rooting for them to succeed. But hardship is gonna come. But what you got? Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest differentiating factors, like you said, between people that are successful and not successful. Because I think in investing or in entrepreneurship or whatever you want to call it, you're going to have hardships but the difference is you can prepare yourself and you always say uh preparation meets uh gosh i'm always chopping proper up preparation saying. yeah proper preparation <laughs> prevents piss poor performance. performance yeah exactly and so you know if you prepare yourself you're going to still have hardships, but you're going to be prepared for those hardships. And I think when people start saying, woe is me, and they're crying, and they're all this and that, it's because they were never preparing themselves for a situation like this. And that situation has arrived, and now their back's against the wall, and they're stuck. And I think in investing or you know real estate or whatever you're doing, you always have a plan and you are always prepared for those things to go wrong. You don't want them to go wrong, but they're going to happen. But then you're prepared and you're in control of the situation. And I think anxiety comes from not being in control of that situation. So it's always, at least for me, I'm always trying to prepare for those situations because I know that they're going to come. While on the other hand, at the same time, simultaneously preparing for getting that next deal. So I'm always trying to expect bad outcomes in a sense, but preparing myself for when it does happen so that when those outcomes do happen, you know, I don't want to hear that it's happening. It sucks dealing with it. But, you know, I, I've taken proper measures to handle that situation. Right. Um and like some of the things that I've went through, I mean, just to give you a reference, uh, the first, my first plan to getting rich was, um, I was in the army, 19 years old, uh, little snotty nose chump would say, Oh, I know how I'm gonna make money. You know, I had this guy come knock on my barracks door and he convinced me to buy universal whole life insurance. I already had insurance. I knew that. But he said, oh, no, this way you can put money up and invest and borrow money from it. They was talking about this back when I was, you know, 19 years old. So that's 20 some years old. Um, and it's all said, oh, that's how I'm going to make the money. Then I realized once I, you know, start getting the statements, you know, one year in, you know, most of the money was going towards the going towards the policy itself. And then only crumbs was going towards the investment portion. So I'm looking like, oh, that was just a waste of money. So I canceled that one. Um, I, I mean, I've tried, I've tried almost everything. Um, the infomercials, the late night infomercials that be on TV, you know, when I was, when I was really busted and broke, you know, I told myself I was going to 
you know, I'm going to figure it out. And then so this uh, infomercial on uh, building a credit card company, you know, being a being an advertiser for credit card companies and driving traffic to your website to get um, to get people to sign up for credit cards. And then you will get your commission based off the people that's approved um, to be affiliated with this guy. I'll never forget his name. I'll just go with last name it was like Morrison or something like that. Um, but to get in this program was $5,000. I didn't have $5,000, but I had a credit card. So I put it on a credit card and then it was still monthly fees on top of that. Then you had to pay for website maintenance. Then you had to pay for all this other crap. And then it didn't dawn on me till I was three, six months in. And then at $5,000 grew to $10,000 in credit card debt that why is he giving why is he getting me to set this up when he's already had it set up so i'm in competition with the biggest guy in the game so the idea of me getting my traffic you know google adsense and then pay-per-click that was that was draining me uh, but um i'm i'm in competition with the biggest guy in the game so he didn't took money from me through the affiliate you know through you know buying this program then he's, then I don't have, you know, the ad space or the bankroll to actually put a lot of money in the ad sense. So it was just a loss and loss. I think all in all, I lost $12,000 in that venture. And then, you know, fast forward going forward, I, um, you know, invested in mutual funds. Of course, I was just looking at the, what's the one, what mutual fund I could put the least amount of money in. I didn't look at expense ratios. I didn't look at, um, uh, I didn't look at management and expense fees. I didn't look at performance. I just said, I'm just trying to put my money somewhere. And then, so my first mutual fund I put money in was like a first start mutual fund, just getting somebody just used to saving money. And uh, so the performance on that was absolutely terrible. And then it took me about a year or so to realize that before I start looking at and understanding what I need to do. And then you can fast forward going into stocks. I thought, like everybody thought, oh, if I put a little money into penny stocks, then I can blow up and be a big dog. And then I lost a substantial amount of money trying to trade penny stocks. So in all of those instances I just told you, I could have just sat there and said, woe is me, woe is me. Oh, I ain't doing that no more. Stock market is a gamble. Uh, all these people knocking on the doors, the infomercials are, infomercials are fake. They're just trying to scam you. I could have did that and gave up on life. I could have said I tried it all. It didn't work. But the thing is, I just said, I'm going to educate myself. And I don't mean educate myself by going to college. I mean, I'm going to educate myself. I'm going to pick up a book and read and learn. I'm going to follow uh, people on social media that knows what's going on. Social media wasn't as big back then as it was now. So it was more blogs and message boards. And then every topic, term and stuff like that, I would Google it and look it up to see what it meant. And I just further kept educating myself, educating myself, educating myself. And then once uh, I started realizing what it was, then I started doing doing more. I mean, even I had Dave Ramsey and I'm, you know, good growth stock mutual funds, you know, international fund, um, growth, growth and income, you know, all those funds. I didn't know what's what was the right fund when I was doing it? I'll just put it anywhere. And, but I had plenty of opportunities to say, you know, me po going playing poker, thought I was going to be the next Daniel Negreanu. Uh, won some, lost a lot more. And, um, but all these instances, I could have just quit. I could have just gave up and I just could say, oh, man, I'm just going to work a nine to five and I can't make it. But the truth is, is I cried, but I didn't quit. It just kept me motivated to learn more, learn more, learn more. Even fast forward when I started getting into real estate. I mean, at first I just was like, oh yeah, well, everything over what the monthly payment is. And I bought my first rental property cash. Um, I thought everything over what, you know, the HOA fees was and the taxes at the time, that was just cash flow in my pocket. I didn't think about maintenance or nothing like that. So that was just, oh, that was just fun money at first when I first started. And then... You know issues arise and i'm like oh so i had to use my own money out of my own pocket to pay for it because i already blew the money that tenants paid me and um well blew it but i spent it i didn't think of you know having reserves having reserves for different elements 
And I could have said, oh, I ain't doing no more rental properties, man. That's a scam. No, I just got educated. And I just kept going, kept going, kept educating myself. I never stopped. I don't, I mean, Alex, you know how I feel about school and college and stuff like that. But I do believe everybody should be learning every day. And that's what I did. I just, I cried about it because I was pissed off that it happened. Every instance I was pissed off. But I didn't quit. And that's what gets you to the success. If you just keep driving forward, keep driving forward. But if you cry and be like, I ain't going to quit. I'm just going to do it again, do it again. And keep throwing your, banging your head against the wall and not learning something from that instance to make yourself 1%, 2% better every time. Then you're not going to do nothing. But you have to cry you don't quit by educating yourself to get better in the next endeavor that you do and keep pushing. And I think you'll make it to the other side. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, the whole time you're talking, I just feel like I'm lucky to have learned from you and to avoid those mistakes. But it's interesting because it just shows you because you started um, achieving financial success really early early on still like very young so it just shows you like even going through a time with no mentors no help or nothing it just trial and error you're still able to achieve financial success if you just keep going at it and i'm just thinking to myself the whole time too like if you do know someone then listen to the advice that they're giving if they've been a person that has taken action and shown from their actions what they've achieved because that's just going to save you a whole lot of time a whole lot of time of yeah. making those mistakes and i mean i can think of you know a couple mistakes but quickly i'm corrected trust me guys kirby's at my throat if i make a mistake <laughs> to fix it <laughs> But, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, I think a lot of that comes with that controlling the emotion part, you know, you get rid of that emotion part, you just focus on sticking to the rules and you'll see success come out of it. Right. With all that being said, guys, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, share this video and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.